Hey, this is Brian. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and check us out at keysmotorsports.com. Today, we're going to show you how to install a Go Fast Bits diverter valve on an N20 or N26. All right, so as we can see, here is a look at all of the parts that come with the kit. So as you can see, there's not really a tremendous amount that we need to install, so it's, it's not a bad installation. The biggest challenge of this thing is to get access to it. On the N20 and the N26, the diverter valve is located right down here. Now, the easiest way to get to it is to clear out some of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to first remove the intake. If you're not sure how to do that, we have a video linked above. Okay, so at this point, our intake is out. And what we're going to do now, just to give us a little bit more space, is we're going to remove the inlet as well. And as you'll notice, whenever we take off a pipe, we always plug it with a towel to prevent anything you don't want from going into your intake track there. So what you want to do is disconnect this connection here. For a more detailed video on how to remove your inlet, be sure to see the link up above, and that'll take you to our MST inlet install. Um, so basically, we're going to disconnect this, then right here, there's a tab on the left and the right. Press those in and then just carefully wiggle this out. Then over here, there are two vacuum lines. I disconnect both, so start with the top one. If you haven't removed one of these before, you press on the, the rib section, and then that's going to expand some clips so that you can pull it out. So once again, you just press on the rib section and there's a hook on this side and a hook on this side and it's going to spread them out so that that can be removed. And we'll gently press this out of the way. Then do the exact same thing on the lower one. Okay. All right, once you've done that, there is a 10 millimeter that secures the inlet in place. Then once you have that nut removed, you can very carefully Pull your inlet completely out, just like that. All right, so if you look back here, again, this is the diverter valve. There are three of these four millimeter hex bolts that are on here. So there's one over here, one over there, and then one below. Uh, what I'd like to do is start by disconnecting the diverter valve. So just press on the little tab and this guy. We're just gonna push that out of the way. Um, the nice thing is because we have the inlet out of the way, it makes it a lot easier to work with here. Now the trick to doing this is you want to get a set of these sockets that look like this and it has a ball joint on the end. So this way you can go in at a little bit of an angle and still get those bolts out. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with this one. This is one that a lot of people have problems with. And you get it just like that. Now I can't quite get my wrench on that, so I'm gonna put an extension on. And we'll get this set up. And you just wanna press towards it, and then that'll start to, to break the seal. And right now, it's, it's pretty easy. It's gonna very carefully just continue to work this bolt out. And again, this is not something you wanna do with the motor super hot, so. Be sure to give it plenty of time to cool down. Okay. Then with this one, it's pretty easy to go straight on. And grab that one as well, move that out of the way. And then what I like to do again is use my phone and navigate to that last bolt. All right, so at this point, we have our diverter valve fully detached. Uh, what we're going to need to do now is we need to get the wastegate out of the way. So just disconnect it, move that connection out of the way. Then you will need a T45. There is a T45 bolt that secures it over on this side and also on this side. Not really something we can show because it's underneath. So you're just gonna have to do this one by feel. And again, use the camera on your phone. That always is very helpful. And just for reference, this is what the bolt looks like that you're removing. So then do the same with the other one on the other side. 
And what you can do is just carefully lock this up. Make sure to grab that bolt so it doesn't fall. Just rock this up and push it out of the way. Now, as long as you don't touch the adjusting nut, you should be fine. You won't have to reset it or anything. Then once that's out of the way, the diverter valve will slide out just like that. All right, so at this point in the process, we have the old diverter valve off. What you wanna do is grab this middle portion, just gently pry up, and then there is a little spring in here. We're gonna set that to the side. Once you've done that, pry up on this little piece of plastic and set that to the side. Now, to reassemble it, what I would recommend is using the spring that is provided by Go Fast Bits. This is going to give you the best throttle response, so it's more like driving in a sport mode where if you use your OEM spring, which is acceptable, it's more like a comfort mode, as they say. So again, the whole point of doing a diverter valve is A, you wanna get that throttle response, you wanna make sure it's nice and crisp, and you want it to hold as much boost as possible, which this setup is going to do. And again, we recommend using the one that's provided by Go Fast Fits. Next, you're going to get this little plunger. This is going to go right here, just like this. Now, when we go to actually install it, we're gonna to have to take it back apart, but just so you see how this goes together, we're gonna to take our, our top portion here, You'll see that this has a little notch in it, and there's a little knob right there. So this is going to go like that. And we'll press that together. Then you're going to have your other spring. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to coat this with a little bit of engine oil, and your piston is going to go on top. Now, as you saw a couple minutes ago, the space is extremely tight, so what we need to do is we need to get this part installed on the car and then we need to get this part installed. So let's work on that now. Once you've lubricated this piston with a little bit of oil, what we can do is we can start to install this. You wanna make sure this little notch is in the top left. So it should say GFB on top, but just in case they ever change that, just look for the notch because that is really the, uh, the true sign there. All right, so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the spring in, put our plunger in. Remember, we need to get this little notch in the top left. So, what we're gonna do, is I found if you kind of put it at a, a downward angle, like that, it should pop pretty much into place. And then what you can do is apply pressure and try to get one of these threaded. And then that'll hold it in place so it shouldn't actually pop apart or anything. All right, once you have your diverter valve assembled in here, what you wanna do is try to squeeze it together a little bit. This part's gonna be really difficult to show. What I'm gonna do now is I have my bolt on my five millimeter Allen key. Again, it's rounded on the end, same one we used before. Before we were using a four millimeter, now we're using a five. We're gonna take the diverter valve and again, you're probably not gonna be able to see any of this, but I'll talk you through it. And I'm going to rock it in a position where I can feed my bolt up here. Okay, so right now I have it through the plastic. And it's just a feel thing. It's, well, I can't see anything and you can't see anything. Then once you've done that, I'm gonna take the bolt on the left here Put this in the place to try to hold everything. Then what we're going to do again is we're going to put some tape on here. And we're gonna go for that bottom one. Now one trick that I just found is I have these Allen keys that have the, the ball joint on the end to make it easier to get in. Um, if you look at this one right here, this one is my five. Now I happen to have another key set that had five and it also had a 4.5. So the 4.5 was a good size to actually be able to turn it. But as you can see, the actual shaft itself is significantly smaller. So although this is 0.5 millimeters smaller than it really should be, it's still giving me the bite that I need. And it's small enough to get into that tight space because with this bit, it was not happening. So quick little tip for you. 
At this part of the process, the GoFast Fits diverter valve is fully installed, as you can see here. Now it's time to reconnect all the connections, re-secure your wastegate, reinstall your inlet, your intake, and then you're done. At this part of the process, the diverter valve is fully installed and again, it's going to improve throttle response. It's going to hold boost much better than the stock diverter valve. So this is Nick. He drove down from North Jersey today and uh, Nick, tell us a little bit about some of the other mods you have to the car. Uh, so I have the uh, InGen intake, um, a Evolution Raceworks charge pipe, um, a VRSF intercooler, and the VRSF Catalyst downpipe as well as a boot mode stage tune aggressive. Awesome, Bill. It's looking really good, and uh, I'm sure you're going to love that diverter valve. So. All right, yes, I will. Thank awesome. You very much. Thanks so much. Once again, this is Brian. Thanks so much for watching Keys Motorsports. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and check us out at keysmotorsports.com for all of your BMW retrofit, performance, and aesthetic needs. For all of the tools and products that we showed in today's video, be sure to see the description. Once again, my name is Brian. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.